What's up, Navigation Traders? Happy Friday, January 11th. Welcome to this week's video update. Hope everybody had a great week of trading. Before we jump into the alerts, let's take a look at this week's Who Got Caught Being Hot in our community. Every week, we like to recognize somebody for helping other traders. And this week goes to our friend, Sereni V. So thank you, Sereni. Great contributions. If you haven't been in the community this week, make sure you jump in there. Uh, we talked, had a good string going about risk management. Uh, Sereni also posted some answers to other traders' questions, uh, along with some other very helpful posts, along with asking some really good questions that everybody else kind of jumped in on. So good stuff. That's what this community is all about, continues to grow and get more and more engagement from you all, our members. And that's what I was hoping would happen. So congrats, Sereni, and everybody else. Keep up the good work. Uh, all right, let's jump into the alerts for this week. A little bit lighter week of trading uh, as far as the number of alerts go, which is not always a bad thing. Let, let's start with uh, January 7th. So our first trade was an opening trade. We opened an iron condor and EEM. In this case, we tightened up our short strike. So we sold a little bit closer to the money as opposed to our traditional 20 delta. Um, and the reason is, is because EEM is such a low price symbol in the, in the, in the high thirties. And so you can't really do a wide iron condor. You got to tighten that up a little bit. And so the other option would have been to do undefined risk with a short strangle. We've got quite a few undefined risk positions on. So I like to mix in some defined risk, uh, as well. I like to have both just diversifying our strategies. So here is our EEM iron condor. You can see it's a little bit tighter. It's not quite an iron fly. It's not quite a butterfly, uh, but it is tighter than our traditional iron condor. You can see we've got a little bit of profit here in this tray, but not quite enough to take off yet. So we're just in a holding pattern on EEM. Next trade was SPY. So we had an iron condor. Price came through to the downside, breached our downside break even. So we closed out our untested side and then price rallied all the way back into range. And so then we closed our remaining short put vertical, booked over 40% of our initial credit on that January uh, iron condor. And then we were still hold holding our full IC in Feb. We've got a couple other trades in SPY. So I'll go to the platform here in just a second. Uh, our next trade was a closing adjusting trade in IWM. So pretty similar situation where we had an iron condor, price came down, breached our downside break even, we closed out the untested side, still had this remaining put vertical on when price rallied back up, we went ahead and closed that one out. And then in this case, we're still holding our full iron condor in Feb. So let's go to IWM. And here's that one. So you can see price is kind of hanging out in the upper end of our range, uh, still, still within range. So we haven't made any adjustments on this one yet. If price continues higher, we will close out the untested side. If it bounces back, obviously we'll wait to get the required profit before we close that out. Next trade was an opening adjusting trade in SPY. So this is where we just added another full SPY in Feb. And, um, and so let's go ahead. And, and then the next trade here also is in SPY. So this is a closing adjusting trade where we closed our put vertical side of our other iron condor because price had breached the upside break even. So let's go to the platform and tie all the SPY trades together. So we closed out our January one. I mentioned that, that was our first alert. And then our second SPY alert was adding this new iron condor. So when we added this, we had two full iron condors. One was kind of over here. And then we did another one kind of centered around price. We skewed this a little bit so we have more downside, gave us a little bit of short delta, uh, but still fairly centered, just a little tiny bit of a skew. Um, so that's where that one is. It's, it's still pretty centered here. And then, um, and then we, on the other iron condor, price had come up and breached our upside break even. So we closed out the untested side. And so now we're just holding this short call vertical. And this does a couple things. It keeps that short delta on here, but uh, so we're just waiting for some downside to get back into range, hopefully. And then hopefully we can book profits on both of these pieces. Um, if this, if price continues higher, 
Uh, we may roll this piece just to keep that short delta, kind of like we've done on some of our other iron condors. Uh, obviously, if it comes back into range, we'll, we'll most likely close that, uh, but we will deal with that when the time comes. Still got a lot of time in Feb. Uh, Feb is how many days? 35 days to expiration in Feb, so still a lot of time to work that trade. Next trade was a rolling adjusting trade in EWZ. So we had a short strangle on an EWZ. Price breached our upside short strike. So we just simply rolled our untested side up. So we just rolled our puts up from uh, 34 up to 41. So now we have the 41 puts and the 42 calls. If we go to EWZ on the platform and take a look, that's what it looks like now. So we just simply rolled our puts up uh, from 34, it was down here, we rolled that up to 41, where you can see right here. So just playing the waiting game now, most likely what we'll do is wait till we get down to closer to that 21 days to expiration, and then we'll probably roll out to March. If price makes a significant move out of our range here, and implied volatility stays high, I should say pops higher, uh, we'll, we would add to this, but with implied volatility as low as it's gotten, uh, we'll just continue to roll, but we probably wouldn't add to this unless implied volatility pops back up. So that's where we are in EWZ. Next trade was a closing adjusting trade in IYR. So we closed out our iron condor in IYR uh, with 37 days, booked 40, almost 40% 40 of max profit on this trade. And then at this point, we were still holding our short put vertical side from the January cycle. Now, we did have a uh, an alert today. Let me just jump to that. That was our, our last alert this week, this morning on Friday, where we had that remaining short put vertical from that Jan iron condor. We went ahead and closed that out. There's only seven days to expiration. We could have held over the weekend, but if, if there had been a sharp move lower, it could have wiped away our profits. So we went ahead and closed that out. We were completely out of IYR, booked a, a decent profit, on that one, I think it was a couple hundred bucks, uh, $273. So we are out of IYR. And then the other trade, I'll make sure here. Yeah, the only other trade here then was also this morning. This was an opening trade in Costco. Uh, don't have any upcoming earnings in the very near future. And we we're just looking for a place to add some short delta. And Costco looks like a decent option. We did this in Feb with 35 days left, and we just simply sold a short call vertical to add some short delta exposure. If we go to Costco and take a look here, had this massive move down after uh, after their last earnings announcement, which was in mid mid December, and it continued to fall, and then it's and then it's bounced back up. So. Uh, we're just looking at this as a possible decent entry point, we hope, and, and hopefully that roll, price ro kind of rolls back over, get a little bit of a continuation to the downside, and that would benefit our short call vertical. Okay, so that's where we are in Costco. So those are those were all the alerts for the week. Let's take a look at some of the other positions, starting with 6B, the British pound. We've got a short strangle on here. And you can see price is still well within our range here. Just waiting for some more time to pass and some more theta to decay. Oil, our good friend oil has bounced back. It's down a little bit today, but nice rally over the last couple of weeks in oil, which is exactly what we needed. So we've got two pieces on here. We've got the 53 call, the 63 and a half put. We've got this inverted strangle. Now, if you take a look here, we're up, since we did this roll, we're up $4,000 on this piece uh, out of a possible 71.20. So we're over 50% of max profit at, on this piece as it stands, okay? So we, at some point here in the near future, we're gonna want to lock that in and just extend duration and roll out to the next cycle. Now, in oil, in this cycle, there's 34 days left to expiration, so a lot of time, so we're not even close to that 21 days, but what I, what I, what I want to do, because we have two different pieces here, and just to diversify that time and to go ahead and lock that in because we've gained so much back, is we might look to roll this out to, to the next expiration cycle, which in this case would be um, April with 63 days right now. 
Uh, I'd like to wait till that gets under 60 to stay in our wheelhouse of that 30 to 60 days. And so next week we will be at that point. So look for us to potentially roll one of these pieces in our oil trade out to April with uh, when it gets under that 60 days, right at that 60 days to expiration, or we may do it if it has 61, that's okay too. Um, so what we'll end up doing is it'll be this one here. So we've got two pieces. We've got this one, which is a 53 call, 63 and a half put. And if we just roll that in, it will stay inverted. But what I'll probably do is I'll probably lower that put from 63 and a half down to maybe 58 or somewhere in there. Now, keep in mind, and this isn't something that I have in the course because this happens very infrequently. But if we roll this and we move down our put to get a little bit less inverted, to to lessen our inversion, if you want to call it that. Um, when we buy back this strangle and we resell another one, let, let me just show you what I mean. I'm going to do another whole video on this because this is a little bit uh, complex. It's a little bit confusing if you haven't ever done it. But if we take a look at just this piece here, okay, just the 53 call, 63 and a half put. If we bought that back today... If I can get this to work, uh, hang on a second here. I don't, I don't know why it's highlighting everything right now. Hmm. For some reason, I can't get it to just highlight. Well, I'm going to just create the closing order of the 53 call and the 63 and a half put. Uh, 53 call, 63 and a half put. Yeah, that'd be this one here. Okay. So if we buy this back right now, we're buying it back for 1357. Okay. Now, so remember that number, 1357. Now, if we go out to April in the next cycle and we were to just roll and resell this out here at the same strikes, 53 call, 63 and a half put, you see we're going to sell that for 1459. So our net credit is going to be the difference between what we bought it back for and what we sold it for. So if we use the same strikes, we would get a credit, right? Which is what we want on a roll. We, we like to get credit. However, if we, and the max profit on that would be 4,090. Okay, so remember that. If we were to lower that put down, let's just lower it down to like the 58 just to get an idea. Look what that does to our credit. We get a lower credit, okay? So essentially, we're buying that back for 1357 or whatever it was, and when then we're reselling this one for 10. That's a net debit, right? So that we, we don't like that, but, but look what this does. is It raises our max profit, and it also increases our theta, and it lessens our delta, okay? So don't be surprised next week once, once I do this and I'll be looking at where everything is at that point, but I'm just trying to give you a, a little bit of a heads up that we may uh, lessen the inversion by, keep, by bringing our puts down lower. It's not going to give, it's going to give us a net debit on the roll, but it's going to increase our theta, lessen our deltas. Our, delta, our directional exposure, so it won't make us as long oil. It'll neutralize our delta, and it'll give us a higher max profit on that piece of the trade, okay? So hopefully that wasn't too confusing. I'm going to do a whole nother video on this when I actually do that next week, so look for that. But as it stands right now, oil's uh, been good to us this last couple weeks. It's moved up, made back a bunch of profit. We still got some work to do. Oil still owes us some money, but that's where we're at on that piece. And then let me uncheck this so I can show you the other piece. So let's just look at the 54 call, 56 put, and similar thing. I mean, prices come all the way back up, gotten us back some profit there. And so what we'll probably do is we'll probably leave this one until we get closer to the 21 days to expiration. We'll go ahead and roll this the 53 call, 63 and a half put out to the next cycle to kind of help diversify that time frame. And then we'll just continue to manage those as necessary. Okay, so hopefully that helps. By the way, I want to give you a quick update too. So the oil and that gas situation, right? We had this huge down move in oil, very painful. We're still down on the trade, but we're making our way back. Uh, we had this huge, crazy move up 
and down in nat gas. And so we were down significantly on that. We're still down a little bit on our nat gas trade. But think about this, okay? This happened in October, right? Beginning in November, October is when this kind of massive move started. And and so it it definitely significantly dropped our our over our overall profits for the year. But guess what? We're we've already made back all that money. Now, we still have work to do in that gas and we still have work to do in oil, so we haven't made back our money specifically in those symbols. But because we kept our position size small enough to continue to add and manage and 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 work the rest of our portfolio, we've gotten back all that money. The peak of our portfolio was a little over ninety six thousand uh, dollars in October of two thousand eighteen, and now our account's back to ninety six thousand dollars. So, you know, we one of the discussions that we had in the community was. Was yeah, you know, what about these big moves, especially in the futures, because they're bigger contracts. Uh, you know, how do you mitigate or minimize that risk from these huge one-directional moves? Well, you can never and completely get rid of risk, right? We're traders; we have to accept risk. And the biggest risk with this type of trading is those extended one-directional moves because they bust out of our range, and that's when we have to adjust and 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 roll and do the other mechanical things that we teach. But think about that. It was, it's only been a couple months, and after those huge, dramatic moves, and we had two contracts in that gas, we had two contracts in oil, which in hindsight, looking back, that was probably more than we should have. We should have had just one contract in each because they are such big contracts. But guys, two months later, we've already made back all that money, okay? And then if, you know, assuming that gas and, and oil still, you know, continue to stabilize their pricing. I mean, we'll make it back all the money in those symbols specifically, but the ability that we had because we stayed small enough to continue to manage all these other positions, open positions, closed positions, adjust as necessary, we've already made all that money back. So anyway, so that was a little bit of a rant, but I just wanted to make sure you understand how powerful this is because if you just have a diversified group of of, of symbols, if you diversify your strategy, if you diversify your time in the, in the trade, if you keep your position size small, that is the key. I can't stress that enough. The only thing that would have really hurt us on those positions if we would have been too big so that we couldn't do everything else that we were doing. And because we stayed small enough to still continue to do that, we've already made back all those losses that we saw um, in, in November and December. So anyway, I hope that's helpful because I can't stress that enough that staying small is the key to this type of trading. We remember we're using options. Options are leveraged. So you have to stay small enough and you have to stay small enough in the individual symbols and you have to keep that cash available in your account to be able to do all those other trades around those other, posi uh, around those positions as well. So that is where we are overall. Um, and by the way, as far as our short delta to theta ratio goes, we're over one to one. We're about one and a half to one with short delta to theta. So that's good. We're in a great position there. We've got a lot of different diversified symbols here. We've got exposure in the in the British pound and oil, S&Ps, nat gas, bonds, wheat, individual stocks. We've got the Dow. We've got emerging markets. We've got Mexico. We've got Brazil, China, small cap, another stock, Lulu, uh, the Qs, which is NASDAQ, mostly technology. We've got semiconductors, S&P. We've got technology, utilities, healthcare, retail. You know, so we've just got an awesome mix of symbols, different strategies, different symbols, different time frames. And that is the name of the game. And that helps minimize <clears throat> that risk. Again, you cannot eliminate risk in trading, but you can minimize it by doing exactly what we're teaching. So, all right, enough of that rant. Let's move on to bonds. We've got a adjusted short strangle in bonds where you can see the price is still fairly centered there. Uh, we still need back some more to get back to even on this one. Uh, we've got plenty of time in bonds. Uh, if we take a look here, for some reason, my internet just uh, went out for a minute, storming a little bit here. So 
Uh, anyway, we, we've got uh, plenty of time left in these options <clears throat> Excuse me. before we roll, so we'll continue to manage that one. Uh, wheat, we've got this iron condor, very centered here, not quite enough profit to take off. Uh, by the time this gets to 40, 50% of max profit, we will be profitable overall in our wheat position. In Apple, we've got a sh uh, long put vertical and just looking for some downside here. We've got this on for that short delta exposure. Price has kind of breached, moved out of our range, but we've got plenty of time in Feb, 35 days. Hopefully price can turn around and roll back into our range. I mentioned Costco, DIA. We've still got two sets of short call verticals. Both of those are in Feb. One is still within our range here. The other has busted out a little bit with the up movement in stocks that we've seen. So just looking for some downside to get that back into range. Uh, we'll continue to hold these for that short delta exposure that we need. So that's where we are in DIA. Uh, I mentioned EEM, EWW. We've got this adjusted strangle here. Price is hanging out right here on this hash mark uh, on the upper end of the range. If uh, Let's see where implied volatility is on EWW. Uh, and it's not showing up right now. So it's it's still fairly high. And so what we'll do is if price moves higher, we will add another centered strangle in EWW. And if, you know, next week we'll be under that 60 days to expiration in March. So we would do that in the next expiration cycle. Again, just diversifying that time. EWZ, I mentioned that one. FXI, we've got this uh, put butterfly on. And we've got enough to, we could book this profit. I'm going to give it a little bit more time. I'd like to add another one out in March as well. We are down in our FXI trade overall, but uh, in good shape on this one. Fairly centered, got some good profit there. IWM, I mentioned that one. J&J, &J, so we've got a short call vertical here that we put on for some short delta exposure. You can see we've got a little bit of profit here. Just looking for some more downside to benefit that. J&J uh, &J has earnings coming up on the 22nd, so we'd prefer to be out of this trade before then. So we'll look to uh, close this out here in the next uh, 10 to 12 days. Lulu, we've got a short call vertical on here. I considered closing this one because it's going to, you know, the probabilities of it getting back to back to range are starting to get a little bit slim. However, uh, we had a nice down day yesterday and then it's just kind of hanging out here. So if we can get another push lower, we might close out of this or if it rips higher, we may close out too. So we're getting to a point where we would need to get out of this one. It's in January, so it expires next week. So we'll either roll or close next week. If we want, if we really want to keep the short delta, we may roll to keep the dream alive, or we may just close it out, take the loss, and look elsewhere for short delta, which is the most likely thing that we'll probably do, depending on where everything is. QQQs, very similar to DIA. We've got one set of short call verticals where prices broken out of its range to the upside, so we need some downside to get back in. And then we've got the other piece of that. Let me reset this. So that's that one. The other piece, very similar to DIA, it's kind of hanging out near the break-even point. So just looking for some more downside to get back into range there. SMH, our semiconductor, we've got this adjusted strangle, which is now a an 85 strike straddle. Hanging out near the upper, upper end of the range. Uh, very similar to what we were talking about in EWW. Next week, we could potentially look to add another centered strangle on this, collect some more credit, add another piece, diversify our time frame. Uh, or obviously, if, if price moves sharply lower, we'll be in good shape here. Uh, but we'll see what happens next week and uh, do what's necessary in SMH. SPY, I already mentioned. XLK. This is another long put vertical that we had originally put on for short delta. And so just looking for some downside to get back into range here. XLU, which is the utility ETF. We've got another one of these tight iron condors, almost like an iron butterfly. And we are uh, almost close to a point of taking off profits here, but we want a little bit more in XLU. XLV, we've got this short call vertical on, again, that we put on for short, uh, short delta exposure. And so just looking for some more downside before we do anything in XLV. 
And XRT, we've got this adjusted strangle here where we are looking for some more profit. Uh, but again, we will, uh, you know, if it moves higher, we may add to that. Oops. Uh, or we'll, if it comes down, we'll just continue to collect that theta until we get back to profits. We're almost back to profitability in XRT. So just uh, waiting for a little bit more there. So that's where we're at. Those are all the alerts and those are all the positions. Everybody have a great weekend and we'll catch you next week.